Today, lower prices impact trade in December. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to the latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The ABS released their December trade figures, and in December, the trade surplus was little changed, consolidating at $5.2 billion, and that followed a $5.5 billion outcome for November, which was revised down from $5.8 billion previously. The December result was broadly in line with market expectations, and net exports will likely make a small positive contribution to growth, but only in the order of 0.1 percentage points. Imports did rebound off a weak starting point, as anticipated, to a strong 2.4%, but exports were the main surprise, with the rise of 1.4% disappointing held back by softer prices. As we predicted, so export earnings rose by just 0.6 billion dollars in December to be 8.3% higher than a year ago. Exports of metal ores, fuel, and gold all moved higher in the month with a combined increase of 0.75 billion dollars, but coal export earnings were flat with a robust lift in shipment offset by a reported lower average export price. On a December quarter basis, the trade surplus narrowed, as expected, with commodity prices moderating in the quarter, notably iron ore, which had spiked in the June quarter on the supply shock from Vale Brazil. As a result, the trade surplus came in at $14.5 billion for the December quarter, down by $5 billion on the September quarter result of $19.4 billion. The terms of trade pulled back around 4.5% in the quarter. That move accounted for the vast bulk of the lower trade surplus. On volumes, it looks like export volumes rose modestly in the order of 0.5%. Manufactured goods exports had another strong showing in the final quarter of 2019 with a robust lift in volumes supported by the lower Australian dollar. Rural goods exports managed a rise, centred on meat exports, and service exports continued their uptrend, also supported by the lower dollar and on strong demand from the Asian region. The other exports category cooled back sharply, while resources appear to have been mixed. Imports were softer in the December quarter, broadly flat, we estimate. This continues the recent weak trend in imports against the backdrop of sluggish domestic demand, although the details suggest that import volumes in the quarter were dented by a sharp pullback in the volatile gold segment. Now, of course, ahead, we have to expect these numbers will deteriorate as the coronavirus starts to take hold. But how much? will be something for a later discussion. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.